How do you test solar panels? What types of tools do you need to test them? And then why should you test the solar panels? We're gonna go over all those in this quick video today. I'm Mike with DIY Solar Workshop. The first thing I wanna do is go over why you need to be able to test your solar panels. So both of these are brand new panels and we wanna test them to make sure that we got a good panel before we put it up. The last thing we wanna do is install a panel and then find out later that we have a problem so the string isn't producing enough or depends on how you've got it wired, you might not get anything off that string because you've got one bad panel. Uh, now, if you're looking at used panels, you want to make sure that you have good used panels and you're not buying a panel that just doesn't work for you. And even if you did test them and they were refurbished, you want to make sure that before you put them up, uh, wherever you're putting up on your, your solar system, that again, that panel is still working for you. And then uh, the last one would be sometimes after you have your panels installed, you can find that your system's not performing like it's supposed to. And you may need to troubleshoot and figure out what's going on with what panel and why you're not getting uh, the output that you need or, or expect from your solar system. So when you get ready to test your panel, first, I wanna make sure that you've got a clean panel. Make sure that it's not dirty and, and covered in dust because it's been in storage for a while. Second, make sure you've got good sun. You can tell right now we've got great sun for being in the middle of winter. This is January. Uh, luckily here in Arkansas, we still get uh, 45, 50 degree weather in January. January, uh, but we want to make sure that it's at a good angle to the sun so we're not laying flat. For our current month, we should be at about a 45 degree angle uh, just to get the panel lined up with the sun. And I'm not saying you have to have that exact, but you want to get it close on there. And again, if it's a really cloudy day, you may want to wait until you have a better day so you can do it. This is going to be my preferred tool to do this. This is from Frog Bro. There's a lot of them out there. You can figure out the one that uh, works best for you. Make sure that it will cover the watts and the amps that you need to use on your system and the volts. So there's really all three you want to make sure um, that'll do that. These are normally not meant to cover whole strings of panels. This is no normally meant to do one panel if you're talking a bigger one like this, or maybe a couple of panels if they're the really small ones on there. But you can easily max this out if you start testing more than one of them. Now the great thing about these is it's gonna show you everything you wanna know right away with a connector that's already um, just plug and play on that. You can use your multimeter, which I'll show you in a minute, but uh, by far this is my preferred method. Although these can cost you anywhere from 60 to 100 bucks. So if you don't wanna buy something else, then you can use your multimeter uh, for that. Uh, so with this one, uh, just so you know too, I actually trimmed off, I don't know if you can see that, these little clip uh, ones here, even with my uh, tools to stick in there and pull them out, this was pretty hard to come out. And when you test a lot of panels, this isn't something that's needing to be clipped and stay in place. This is something I just need to test a panel and pull it apart. All right, so I've got some bifacial panels. Uh, these are gonna be 400 watt bifacial. And here's gonna be the panel that we're gonna test to get you the full amount. And then I'm gonna show you where we do the hookups here. I'm actually gonna show you what this is from the backside as well on the bifacial uh, when we do this. So these are brand new, I'm gonna get these untucked. So it's important to note that on almost every single panel, if you look at what looks like the male connector on the plastic, that is gonna be your positive connector. <clears throat> and then the one that's gonna be the female on the plastic is gonna be your negative connector on here. Uh, while we're here, let me just go ahead and hook this up and I'm just gonna show you what this tests from the backside. Now on this, all you have to do is either hit manual or auto. Manual will do it once, auto will do it continuously. And these don't need any batteries because they're using the right from the solar panel. So what we want to do is I'm going to get out of it so I'm not blocking the sun on that. I'm going to go ahead and hit the manual. All right, and even from the backside, this bifacial is producing uh, 203 watts uh, of, of solar uh, on that. I'm going to go ahead and hook this up to the uh, panel that's facing the correct way. Alright, so we got everything hooked up on the back side. I'm going to go ahead and hit manual. Alright, so we're going to get a zoomed in picture on this. When testing your panels, the VOC, or the open circuit voltage, and the ISC, which is the short circuit current readings, are by far the easiest and the most used when you're just doing a basic panel check to see how everything's working without using any specialized equipment. Now you can get these numbers with almost any standard multimeter. The panel tester that I use, which is a solar MPPT meter, is going to give us all the numbers, but it really isn't required to test your panels. I'm going to go into some of the basics on several solar terms here, but if you don't fully understand these terms and the concepts, we definitely discuss those in greater detail on our solar panel video. I'll link it below, but make sure you check it out if you have any questions after watching this video. So the top readings on this 
solar MPP T-meter are going to be the VMP, which is the voltage at maximum power, and the IMP, which is the current at maximum power. Now these are more advanced and usually checked when the panel is connected to the system to verify how it's performing. So I'm just going to briefly talk about these. And, and if you take a look, the VMP, um, it's going to be 34.1. And if we take that times the IMP, which is going to be 9.6, that's going to give us a reading of the Pmax or the uh, maximum power output. So when we take those and we times them out, that's going to give us the 327.3 watts, which is exactly what it's showing uh, on the meter for the, the Pmax on it. All right, so I want to focus on is the VOC of 35 and the ISC of 10 from our readings. Now, when you compare those numbers to the STC chart, uh, when we go to the panels, either on the backside of the panel or when you download all the spec sheets on it, you're going to see that the VOC for this panel at 400 watts is going to be 37.07. And the ICS is going to be 13.79. So it would appear this panel isn't working correctly at all because we're definitely below those. Now, if you're just looking at the back of the panel for these numbers, almost all panels are just going to have a sticker showing the STC numbers and not the NMOT chart. And before you get worried that the panel has a problem, let's just talk about the differences of these two and look at the charts. So let's start with the STC or the standard test conditions. This is going to help you understand the maximum potential of the panel in basically perfect test conditions. And this gives us a good way to compare panel details from one manufacturer to another. Now when we look at the NMOT or the nominal module operating temperature. This gives us a more practical estimate of what you'd really expect in, in your real world scenario once you have those installed. And this is going to be crucial for when we design a system. So we make sure that that system meets your energy needs that we're, we're expecting to get out of it. The STC shows the numbers within a radiance of 1,000 watts per meter squared. And then when we look at the NMOT, that's going to show the numbers at 800 watts per meter squared. And we look at this, 1,000 is going to be the best possible conditions. That's going to be summertime, high peak, complete sunny. You have the perfect angle of irradiance, so the panel is matched up exactly with the sun. So when we look at the STC versus the NMNOT numbers, that's going to be a 20% difference going from 1,000 watts to 800 watts. And when we look at the panel that we tested on here, it was around 10.30 in the morning, and this is going to be the first part of January. So it's pretty easy to guess that we're not going to be getting the optimum um, irradiance of the 1,000 watts per meter squared right now when we're testing this. And when we take a look at the VOC, and, and we compare that in the NMOT chart, that's 35 0.15 and our reading was 35. So I'm going to say that's going to be real close. I'm not too worried about it. And then we look at the ICS, the chart shows 11.13 and we got 10. Now for what I'm doing on testing these, I'm going to tell you these numbers are completely close enough for me to believe that this panel is working correctly and I have no troubles installing it. Right, I'm going to show you the other way to test these now with your multimeter. Now you may not want to buy a specific meter like that to test your solar panels because again that is going to be $60 to $100. So you can use your regular multimeter on that. What you're going to want to do is first make sure that you're measuring your volts and your amps in DC. And then you're going to do pretty much the same thing that you did except for instead of having the nice MC4 connectors that just plugged in place, we're going to go ahead and, and use these on it here. Now I normally try to find a spot where I can hang this but I'm just going to set it on the ground. Remember you're going to want to find the male which is going to be the positive. And then you're going to put the female on here, which is going to be the negative. Uh, and this is showing me 34.12 uh, on that. Now, when you want to test your amps on this, you'll also need to make sure that again, you're on the DC amps. When you hook this up to the panel, you can get a spark on here. So some people will cover the panels or turn them around and then go ahead and, and hook that up uh, on there to test your amps. And then you can figure out your amps and your volts and you can get uh, you know pretty much where you're at uh, on the watts. I will link to this meter, uh, which is a pretty big one. Most people do not need this big of a, a multimeter, but I'll have a one that's a lot more popular for um, home DIYers. That'll be down there as well. So you can uh, get one of these meters. And if you are gonna be doing any of your own DIY solar, this is gonna be an essential tool. You almost cannot do uh, what we're doing here without at least one of these. Although you can do without the watt, but again, it's going to be real nice to have that on there. Let me know if you have any questions on how you would test your panels or any other solar questions in general. And make sure you check out our other videos on solar panels, uh, how they work, how to hook them up, as well as designing and installing your own DIY system. You guys have a great day. Thanks for joining us.